All right, it's time for our last review of the year. And so uh, for number one, it says to factor the following. Uh, this is a trinomial, so we're gonna do the X method. And so on top, we're gonna put A times C, and on bottom is B. And we'll try to think what two numbers multiply to the top and add to the bottom. And so A times C is gonna be two times seven, which is 14. On bottom is my B value, which is negative nine. And to try and think two numbers that multiply to 14, so that's gonna be 14 and one or seven and two and add to negative nine. So it adds to a negative, means both have to be negative, and negative seven and negative two. Then my last step is divide by the a value. So we're gonna divide by two and simplify. That one's done. This one becomes negative one over one. The bottom is attached to the x, the top goes with it. So two x minus seven, and one x minus one. Number two, divide uh, using long or synthetic division. I'll do both. Uh, for synthetic, I'm gonna put negative six in the box. And then list all my coefficients. We are missing the x squared. And so we're gonna have one, six, zero, five, 33. And we're gonna drop, multiply, add. So we're gonna drop down the one, multiply the box, that's negative six. We'll add those together, get zero. Multiply, that zero, add, get zero. Multiply, get zero, add, get five. Multiply, get negative 30, and add, get three. Um, my leading coefficient was one, so I don't have to divide anything. This was x to the fourth, since I divided it, it's now gonna be x cubed. There's my x squared, there's my x, that's my constant, plus five plus three over, well, we divided by x plus six. So there's a synthetic, now to do the long division, which is gonna be a little tight on space, but x to the fourth plus six x cubed plus five x plus 33 divided by x plus six. I look at my leading terms and try to think, what do I multiply x by to make it equal x to the fourth? So that's going to be x cubed, and then we multiply it to everything out here. So that becomes x to the fourth plus 6x cubed. Because we're subtracting, I change all my signs, and so those cancel out. That also cancels out, and I'll bring down my next two terms. And so 5x plus 33, and we do the same thing. What do I multiply x by to make it match 5x? That would be 5, and so that would be 5x plus 30, because we're subtracting, I change all my signs, that cancels out, that becomes three, that's my remainder, three over x plus six. So either way, you get the same answer. Number three, we'll use long or synthetic division to determine that the given polynomial is a factor, and then we'll use the result to factor it completely. And so we're gonna put, if I set that equal to zero, x equals three, we'll put that in the box. Nothing's missing, so one, negative three, negative four, and 12. We'll drop down the one and we'll multiply, we'll add, we'll multiply, we'll add, we'll multiply, and we'll add. So this one doesn't have a remainder, it's a good factor. So this is one of my factors, don't forget about this. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this one down in my final answer so I don't forget about it. And then this becomes x squared minus four, which factors to x plus two, x minus two, using the difference of squares. And so I'm gonna put those next to it, x plus two, x minus two, and there's my answer. Uh, number four, factor completely. This has four terms we're gonna be grouping, which is a whole lot of GCFs. And so to take out the first one, we'll take out x squared, and we're left with x plus three. Out of this one, I'm gonna make it match, so I need to change the signs. We'll take out negative one, so these two will come together, and you're left with these. And then those will come down, x plus three, and difference of squares, x plus one, x minus one. All right, number five, uh, factor the following completely. I don't like negatives at the beginning. I also see there's X's all around. So I'm gonna take out a negative X to start out with. That's my GCF. So it's gonna change my signs and reduce my exponents. So it's gonna be positive X cubed minus two X squared minus four X and plus eight. And then I've got four terms on the inside. So I'm gonna do grouping on the inside. So I'm gonna drop down my negative X on my first group, I can take out x squared, and I'm left with x minus two. Second group, I can take out negative four, and I'm left with x minus two. Again, I want these two to match, which now they do. And so I've got negative x. These two will come together as one, x minus two, and we're left with the x squared minus four, which again will factor with difference of squares. So we have negative x, x minus two, 
x plus 2, and another x minus 2. So you could write it like this, or it could also be written, since there's two x minus 2s, negative x, x plus 2, x minus 2 squared. All right, number six, we need to get a common denominator. So between three, six, and two, my LCD is gonna be six. So this one we need to multiply by two. This one's good, and this one we need to multiply by three. So now it becomes two X minus six over six, X minus five over six, and three over six. Now we have a common denominator. I don't need the denominators anymore. We're just gonna solve on top. And so, I'm gonna move this x over, so I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite 2x minus six equals, and we'll go ahead and combine these two, x minus two. So we'll subtract x over here. So x minus six equals negative two, and then we'll add six over to get x equals four. And then again, we can always check our work. And so in my calculator, I'll put in four minus three over three. So that's the left side. Now on the right side, I've got four minus five over six plus one over two, also one third, it checks. So factor, uh, that is a sum of cubes. And so the, the formula is a cubed plus b cubed, that's these, is my a cubed and my b cubed, will turn into a plus b, a squared minus a b plus b squared. So we need to find the a and the b. So the a is gonna be the cube root of 64x cubed, which is 4x. My b is gonna be the cube root of 27, which is three. And so now we'll just plug them in. So my a is gonna be 4x plus three. And then for my a squared, we're squaring the whole 4x squared. So that's gonna go with both of them. So it's gonna be 16x squared minus, we're gonna multiply, 4x times 3, which is 12x, and then plus 3 squared, which is 9. Simplify the following. So this 2x minus 5, that squared means there's two of them. So 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5. And so when I FOIL this, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x, negative 10x, and positive 25. And then we'll distribute this negative two to everything. So that's negative 14 X squared minus 12 X minus 16. And then we'll distribute this three plus 12 X cubed minus 18 X squared minus 18 X. And now we're gonna look at all this and simplify it. Um, and so my like terms, I've got 12 X cubed. That's the only cubic. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. And then I'm gonna go in order. So next off my X squareds, I've got X squared, X squared, and x squared, and so four minus 14, that's negative 10, minus 18 is negative 28 x squared. So now I'm done with all my x squared, so now I'll look for my x's. So I've got negative 10, negative 10, negative 12, and negative 18. And so when I combine all of those, I've got negative 10 and negative 10, that's negative 20, negative 32, negative 50. And I'm done with all my x's. And now for my constants, my numbers, I've got 25 and minus 16, that's nine. Solve the logarithmic equation. And so there's no base written, which means it's implied to be 10. Um, there's two ways you could do it. I'm gonna go ahead and do it the easier way. I'm gonna get rid of this two by dividing by two. So it's log base 10 of x equals four and then we switch it to exponential. So my base is 10, raised to the fourth equals x. So x equals 10 to the fourth is 10,000. If you wanted to do it the other way, you could also make this two be an exponent for the x. So log base 10 of x squared equals eight. And then I would change it. So 10 to the eighth equals x squared. And then I would take the square root to get x equals, and if you put this in the calculator, the square root of 10 to the eighth, you would also get 10,000. So both ways will get the same answer. All right, number 10, um, I'm actually not gonna do right here because if you look ahead, number 13 is the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the graph on number 13 where I have the graph. And so don't worry about 10. Number 11, uh, rewrite the exponential into logarithmic. 
And so that's just going to be log. My base is 5 of 625 is equal to 4. All right, the next one we have, uh, Bob wants to buy a car. The one he wants costs 12500 so that's how much he wants at the end. He has 3000 that's his principal. That's how much he initially has. And deposit into an account that pays 7.5%. So that's going to be 0.075 for my R. Compounded monthly, which means my N is 12. How long will it be before he can buy the car? So we're going to have 12500 equals 3000 times 1 plus 0.075 divided by 12 raised to the 12t. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get this exponential term by itself by dividing by 3,000. So if I put that in the calculator, 12,500 divided by 3,000, and I'm going to change it to a fraction to keep my answer as exact as possible as we go through this. 1 plus 0.075 divided by 12 is 1.00625. Again, keep all those decimals so we keep our answer as exact as possible. And now that the exponential is by itself, we've taken it as far as we can exponentially. Time to switch it to log. Log base 1.00625 of 25 over 6 is equal to 12t. And then we'll divide by 12 to get the t by itself. So we're going to put the log in the calculator. Log base 1.00625 of 25 divided by 6 and then we'll divide that answer by 12. And so my time is 19.09 years. All right, so now we'll get to the graphing. Um, so one over X, that was over one, up one, over two, up a half, over a half, up two. Or the same thing on the other side, left one, down one, left two, down a half, left a half, down two. You can always plug this in the calculator to get these points as well. Uh, but there's my rational function. This one has two lines of symmetry. And so for the symmetry, it could be this diagonal line right here, which is y equals x. Or it could also be this diagonal line right here, which is y equals negative x. All right, going on, uh, number 14. It just described the transformations. Um, from the parent function, this plus 3 just goes up 3. Number 15, uh, we're going to solve. And so we need to get a common base on both sides. And so this side is good, 3 to the 2x. But I'm going to change 27 to be 3 cubed and keep that squared on the outside. Now that we have a common base, I can get rid of my bases and solve for the circle, solve for the exponents. So we're going to have 2x equals 3 times 2, which is 6. Divide by 2, x equals 3. If x in the function a over x is replaced with x plus 5, so that x is becoming x plus 5, that means we're going to have a over x plus 5. How's the graph change? So this plus 5 on bottom with the x is going to go left 5. Find the domain of the function. Uh, the domain is going to be... Oops. All real numbers except x cannot be whatever makes the denominator equal 0. And so we'll factor that using the x method, 16 and negative 8. What two numbers multiply to 16 add to negative 8? That'd be negative 4 and negative 4. So x minus 4, x minus 4. If I set that equal to 0, it's only going to be 4. So all real numbers, but x cannot be 4. Number 18, describe what happens as the graph, um, to the graph as the value of k changes. So that's this one on the outside. It's going to vertically shift up if it's positive or down if it's negative. The vertical and the horizontal asymptotes, so that's the HA and the VA. So for the HA, we look at the degrees. and compare them. So the degree on top, remember degree is the highest exponent. Degree on top is one, because that's x to the first. Degree on bottom is also one. Those are equal to each other. When they are equal, we look at a over b, which are the leading coefficients of top over bottom. So my a is going to be two, my b is going to be four, which is one half. So y equals one half. For the va, we'll look at the bottom. 
nothing cancels out, and so we'll just set the bottom equal to zero, that's gonna be my VA. So if four X minus two is equal to zero, we'll add the two over and then divide by four. Two over four is also one half, so X equals one half. Number 20, find the value of x in this equation. So we'll subtract 4 first. So negative 2 cube root of x is equal to negative 6. And then we'll divide by negative 2. And so that'd be, that's going to be 3. And then we'll cube both sides. So x equals 27. And then again, we can always check it by plugging it into the original. So negative 2 cube root of 27 plus 4. Negative 2. Check. Describe the changes from this to this, so that x minus four on the inside is gonna go right four, plus on the outside goes up seven. On this one, we need to get a common denominator first, so my LCD, looking at these, is gonna be three x squared, so this one needs to have a three. This one's good, this one needs a three x. So on the left side, we have three x plus 15, over 3x squared. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative, and so it becomes negative x plus 1 over 3x squared is equal to 3x over 3x squared. Now, I don't need the denominator anymore, except for the denominator tells me x cannot be 0. So anything else is fair game, but x cannot be 0. So I'll go ahead and combine like terms on the top. So I've got 3x minus x, which is 2x. 15 plus 1 is 16, is equal to 3x. We'll subtract the 2x over. So x equals 16. And then again, we can always check it. And so we have 16 plus 5 over 16 squared minus 16 minus 1 over 3 times 16 squared. And then on the other side, if I plug in 1 over 16, it equals 1 over 16. So it checks. All right, so for this one, we want to list the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the symmetry, the domain, and the range. All right, so this is a cube root function, uh, which if you're not familiar, uh, right 2 down 6 is going to look something like this. There's a little rough sketch. You can put in the calculator to see what it actually looks like, uh, but something like that. Uh, my domain and range were always all row numbers for cubics and cube roots. My symmetry was uh, rotate, it was rotational 180 degrees around the inflection point, which on this one is right 2 down 6, so 2, negative 6. And then to find my x-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for y, and we'll solve for x. So I'll add 6 over, we'll cube both sides, and so 6 cubed is 216, and then we'll add 2 over. So my x-intercept is 218, or you write 218 comma 0 as a coordinate. Either way works. Uh, for my y-intercept, I will plug in 0 for x, and then just evaluate it. So I can just go to the calculator, math 4, 0, minus 2, which you don't have to put the 0, it's just negative 2, uh, minus 6, is equal to uh, negative 7.26. So negative 7.26, or you could write it 0, negative 7.26. Describe how the graph would change from the parent to this. And so this 3 in the front is going to be a vertical stretch by 3. We're going to the right 3, and we're going down 4. All right, simplify the following. Uh, this one's good. This one has a minus in front, which is going to distribute to all of them, changing all my signs. So negative 8x squared, positive x to the fourth, negative x cubed. This has a negative as well, negative 4x cubed, negative 2. And now it's just combining like terms. So I'm going to go in order. I'll do my x to the fourth first. So I've got this one and this one. And so negative 6 plus 1 is going to be negative 5x to the fourth. And I'm done with my x to the fourth. And then I'll do my x cubed, so I've got 7 and negative 1 and negative 4. So that's going to be 6 plus 2x cubed, because that's 6 minus 4 is 2. 
And then with my squareds, I've got 7x squared, I've got negative 8, and that's it. So that's going to be negative 1x squared. With my x's, I've got 8x, and that's it. So plus 8x, and I'm done. And then my only constant over here is negative 2. Find the value of x. We want to get the x by itself, so we'll start by subtracting 5 over. So negative cube root of x minus 4. So it looks like negative 3. I'm going to rewrite that. The negative should just be in front. Uh, equals negative 3. Oh, almost made another error. All right. Then we're going to get rid of the negative by dividing by negative 1 or multiplying by negative 1, and it becomes positive 3. Then we'll cube both sides to get x minus 4 equals 27. And then we'll add 4 over to get 31. And again, we can check it. 5 minus the cube root of my x is 31 minus 4 equals 2. Check. Graph and describe the transformation. So here I have a vertical stretch by 2, left 4, and down 3. This is a cube root, which means it's that horizontal um, function. And so we're going left 4 and down 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. And then with cube root, um, normally, from our vertex, I'll just write vertex, from our vertex, uh, we go right 1 and up 1 because the cube root of 1 is 1. And we went right 8 and up 2 because the cube root of 8 is 2. Um, and then same thing for the left side, left 1 and down 1, left 8 and down 2. However, on this one, we're stretching by 2 vertically. So it's going to multiply all these y values by 2. So we're going to go down 4, down 2, up 2, and up 4. So we're going to go right 1 and up 1. Sorry, 2. Right 1 and up 2, and then right 8 and up 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 1 and down 2, 1, 2. And left 8 down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. So all the following, we're going to condense first. So log, that's going to be 2 squared. And the addition condenses to multiplication. So x and 3 equals log 6 squared. And so I don't need the logs anymore because I have a log on both sides. I can cancel out. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12x equals 6 squared is 36. We'll divide by 12. x equals 3. And again, we can check it. Um, this one doesn't have a base, so I can use this other log button. So we have 2 log 2 plus log 3 plus log 3. And then 2 log 6, they equal the same thing. It checks. Number 29, we'll rewrite the log into exponentials. So my base is 4 raised to the 6 equals 2x plus 5. And you don't have to solve for x. That's all it asks you to do. Number three, uh, sorry, 30, uh, we're going to describe the asymptotic behavior. So log x is that one that looks like this right here, where it gets close to the y-axis but doesn't touch that y-axis, uh, which is x equals 0. That's the asymptote of the log function. Uh, describe the effects of the graph. So it's, again, transformations, left 2 and down 5. And lastly, we're going to solve a cubic function. So we'll start by subtracting 5. Then we'll divide by 4. We'll take the cube root. We'll add 1. And we'll divide by 3. And I'll check one more. Um, so we've got 4, 3, times 1, doesn't do anything, um, minus 1, and we're cubing it, plus 5, equals 37, that checks. And that is it for our final review. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.